Hi, in today's video we're going to be looking at the Latte Panda Mu x86 small board computer. Here is the small board computer itself. It's on this little card that you can either plug into your own board or you can plug it into this carrier board which you can buy. Um, it's made by DF Robot but it's the Latte Panda Mu carrier board. And on this PCB we've got pretty much everything that we need to run the device. So we've got the CPU in the center here, a Intel processor N100, so it's a 4-core 3.4 gigahertz CPU on here with 8 gigabytes of LPDDR5 running at 4800 megahertz and then we've also got 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. And we've also got various interfaces at the top of the board for things like uh, basic TFTs and that kind of stuff. But if you want to get the most out of these boards, then you do plug it into the carrier board here. And then what that gives you is your USB interfaces, so USB 3, we've also got um, an Ethernet port, HDMI, as well as our options for powering. So we can use the power delivery USB-C slot and that will power this board but if you do want to use the PCIe X4 slot then you do need to power it with a DC barrel jack. And this means that you can run um, GPU intensive applications whether that be games or computational type things you can plug that into here and then you have a fully fledged computer. We've also got two slots here. We can use these for expansion of the SSD, so we can plug in an M.2 SSD and also a Wi-Fi card or Bluetooth or whatever. Uh, and this board basically provides with expansion. And then we can also get things like the UART interface and the I squared C interfaces if you want to communicate with low level electronics. We've also got here a fan cooler. So we can run this CPU at various different power levels and we can run it from, I think it's about 6 watts up to 35 watts. If you're running it at 35 watts at maximum speed you will need the fan cooler but you can run it in much more passive applications if you don't need all of the processing power. So I'm going to put the CPU cooler onto the CPU. There is some thermal tape already on the cooler. I'm just going to clean off the CPU because there's some grease on there. Um, these IPA impregnated cleaning pads are really quite good. I'll put a link to them in the description down below, but you can buy them from Amazon and they're quite handy. Uh, it just means that you can clean stuff up nice and easily. Uh, they're lint-free cloths as well. So that's the CPU cleaned up. We can take off the pad here and attach this to the board. So we've got the little M.2.2230 SSD here. Now you don't actually need this to run the device, this just gives you additional storage. This is a one terabyte uh, SSD here. Let's see if we can screw this into place. And then we've got an Intel AX210 Wi-Fi card, which has the E and the A key, so we can put it in the E key M.2 slot. This also has Bluetooth built in as well, so we can use the board for Bluetooth communications. And then finally the battery. Now the Wi-Fi card does need some external antennas, it doesn't have anything built in. So I've just used one of these slots um, with the antenna connectors built in and I've mounted it onto this screw in the corner. There's no components on the main board around this area so no risk of crushing anything or shorting anything out and that seems to have held those antennas in place quite nicely. So we use the Fnersi uh, this is the FNB48P which we reviewed the other week just to measure the power going into the board and we'll power it through the USB-C connector. We only need the DC barrel jack if we were going to power a graphics card or something like that on the PCIe X4 slot. Right, so let's see what happens when we power this up for the first time. You can see in standby it's drawing just under 1 watt. Let's turn it on and see what happens. It's about 10 watts there. So it seems to be loading something. And in fact it looks like we've got some version of Windows pre-installed 
on the 64 gigabyte drive. So just as it's booted up, you can see it's drawing about seven and a half watts with a few peaks, probably as Windows is doing a few things. And you can see here, we've got details of the processor currently running at 800 megahertz with eight gigabytes of RAM, as we mentioned before, and it's installed Windows 11 Home. And as soon as we connect to the internet, you can see there's actually no license for Windows. So if you want to use Windows on here, you will have to buy a license separately. Just going through the BIOS, I don't think there's any surprises in here, but if we do want to limit the amount of power that the CPU can use, for example, if we have a power limited supply or we don't want to use the CPU fan, we can adjust the power limits here. And we've got two here, 15 watts, which is the normal, and then 25 watts for turbo. And if we want to adjust those, we can do that here. I've just completed a benchmark using user benchmark and the results aren't too surprising really. This is a fairly low power computer system and certainly the graphics is where the system is lacking but the main board that the CPU board plugs into does have a PCIe slot should you wish to use graphics capabilities here. But other than that the Intel N100 here is performing just slightly better than some of the other N100 systems out there. Graphics capabilities, so the integrated graphics, is pretty poor in comparison to other graphics cards. And the memory is working quite well, but it looks like there may be an opportunity to increase the performance if we can enable XMP uh, for that particular RAM chipset that's on the board. So there's quite a variety of uses for a small board computer like this one. You might just want to use it as a low power PC. So if you've got a graphics card for this uh, with any kind of reasonable spec, you'd be able to watch all kinds of videos. You'd be able to watch um, you know, H.265, H.264 encoded videos on here. You'd be able to browse the web. You'd be able to use it for general purpose computing. Uh, but it's low power draw. You can see it's just sitting here drawing five, six, seven watts. And it's relatively powerful capabilities would mean this would be an ideal thing for home automation. You could imagine a home assistant running on here with quite a lot of extra things running on in the background. And this would do really well at serving all of your home automation. But you could also have something like a really nice QT front end so that you can view graphics and get it plotting all your graphs and that kind of stuff. So this would be really nice for that. And now we've got Ubuntu on here and you can see it's just sitting here drawing five to seven watts. What I actually want to use this for is to control some lights that I bought earlier in the year. Now, I haven't done any videos for about a month and a half now because I've been busy uh, redoing the garden, uh, but I've, I got some lights earlier in the year. Uh, they're these little archwork LED lights, and I've got a whole bunch of these, and it's literally about 30 or 40,000 pounds worth of LED fixtures. So we'll do a video on these shortly. But these are all effectively DMX controlled from this uh, large controller here that we've got. And it takes an ArtNet protocol uh, here. So we've got two Ethernet ports that allow you to control all of the lights that are attached. Uh, we've got eight different uh, universes here on the outputs. Uh, this one does have a small fault, so we do need to repair this as well. But I, what I want to do is use this uh, to control this unit here, and then we can have all of the ambient lighting controlled in the garden. And this small board computer is really nice because we've got the Wi-Fi connection here now, which can connect to my uh, home Wi-Fi. But then we've got an Ethernet port, which we can use for the ArtNet protocol. So then you basically just connect the Ethernet port into here. And then we've got full control of all of the lights. So I'm just going to install QLight Controller Plus onto Ubuntu. So on the controller, we've got the IP address for the Ethernet port 1, 2.255.255.1. And then if we go into QLight Controller Plus, we've got the ArtNet uh, interface set up here. So 2.255.255.0. We've got four universes set up, so we can use four of the outputs at the moment. And then if we just go to Simple Desk here, uh, once we've set up the fixtures, we'll be able to control all of the lights. So as we adjust these sliders, we can control them manually, or we can set up um, actual sequences of light fading uh, and that kind of stuff. It's got quite a lot of built-in features on here, uh, which we'll go into a bit more detail in the future. 
And so as you can see, we can actually control these lights, but as I said, a repair is needed. And also we'll take a detailed look at these lights in one of the next few videos because this system was really, really expensive when it was new. And it's got some interesting design decisions, which I think will be interesting to share with you. Now, in terms of the Latte Panda Mu, it does seem to be a really nice single board computer. And from what I can find, the retail price for the unit is somewhere around £150 or so. So it does put it at the more expensive end of the market compared to a Raspberry Pi 5, for example. It is more expensive, but it is a lot more uh, capable. It's got a more powerful processor and also the fact that you can um, basically use it with any operating system you like uh, does mean this is a much more interesting option if you want a little bit more capability than what the Raspberry Pi has to offer. So anyway, uh, that's the Latte Panda Mu, a really nice little small board computer. I'll put a link to the manufacturer's website on the description down below. Hope you enjoyed the video and until next time. Thanks for watching.